welcome you in the name of our patron and protector, Saint Joseph. Yes, we continue our reflection series on Saint Joseph as taught by the doctors of the church. Last week, we began with the first four doctors of the church from the West. And this week, we shall continue with the first four doctors from the East, namely Saint Athanasius, Saint Gregory Nazianzen, Saint Basil, and Saint John Chrysostom, who were proclaimed doctors of the church in the year 1598. So we begin with the first, Saint Athanasius. There was a question in his era if Saint Joseph existed in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, if he was of the synagogue or the church, even though his story is written in the New Testament, but he existed before the birth of Christ. So there was this dichotomy if he was of the New Covenant, the New Testament, or of the Old. Yes, he might have existed in the Old Testament before the birth of Christ, but he is also of the New Testament, the New Covenant. He went to synagogue, but he also belonged to the church. In fact, according to St. Athanasius, he belonged to the church more than the synagogue. He belonged to the New Testament more than of the Old Testament, for he is the ambiguous of redemption. He is the initiator of the new covenant. Then he went further to say, yes, Jesus founded the church, Mary the first member of the church, and St. Joseph the second member of the church. In fact, he went further to say that St. Joseph is the vicar of the church, owing to the fact that he nurtured Christ, he protected Christ. He protected the young church at that infant time. And up to now, to this moment, it continues to protect the church, continues to be a patron of the church. Then St. Athanasius upheld the virginity of St. Joseph, even in the midst of the wrong teachings in the apocryphal writings at his time. Then about St. Gregory Nazianzen. A theologian of the Trinity he is well known about his discourses, his teachings on Trinity. No wonder that while speaking about St. Joseph, he also spoke about Trinity, using the analogy of the Trinity to present the Holy Family as a visible Trinity on earth. He went further to say that the most holy Trinity is a virgin. The Father is a virgin who generates the Son in all his eternal splendor. The Son is a virgin who is generated by the Father without a mother. The Holy Spirit is a virgin who proceeds eternally from the Father and Son. After the image of the August Trinity, the saints recognized a second trinity on earth, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph who are adorned with sublime virginity. So we could see how St. Gregory Nazianzen places Joseph in this Jesus, Mary, Joseph, virginal trinity. And this tells us that, yes, he also recognizes Joseph as a virgin. We could see how many doctors of the church are taught about St. Joseph to be a virgin. And we know that there had been this wrong conception that yes, Joseph might have married earlier, probably he was a widower, and in the Christian arts and writings we see where it is being depicted as an old man. And using this as a response to the part of the scriptures which talks about the brothers and sisters of Jesus. So also says Gregory Nazianzen will call St. Joseph the splendor of all the saints, encouraging devotion to St. Joseph of his efficacious intercession to all those who call upon him. And he went further to say that whatever that we may be looking for from the intercessions of the saints, we can find in St. Joseph, saying further that the Lord has arranged Joseph 
like with a son in all which the saints possess, together in regard to light and splendor. God has concentrated in St. Joseph the splendor of all the saints. Later on, St. Thomas Aquinas will be telling us about St. Joseph in this manner. Then let's talk about another Cappadocian father, St. Basil, who discussed the necessity of Mary being betrothed to Joseph. He asked the question, was it important, was it necessary for Mary to be betrothed to Joseph if incarnation required a virgin? What was the place of Joseph in the redemption in salvation economy? But more than that, it also speaks about the importance of fathers in a family life. This tells us about the place and importance of man in the life of a woman, a place of a husband in the life of the family. He preferred four reasons why Mary had to be betrothed to Joseph. So the first was to spare Mary of the disgrace of being thought to have defied her virginity. And the second was to conceal Mary's virginity in order to deceive the devil and that incarnation may take place. We went further to explain this part that the devil needed to be deceived. Since the devil knows Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 which reads, Well then, the Lord himself will give you a sign, a young woman who is pregnant, we have a son and we name him Emmanuel. With this knowledge, the devil would thereafter have been hunting for the virgin whose son he knew would bring an end to his dominion. So for St. Basil, the betrothal to Joseph was intended to draw attention away from Mary so that the prophecy concerning the birth of a savior would be fulfilled. Then the third was to honor the state of marriage, and the fourth is to anticipate the preordained time for incarnation. Then he also discussed about the perpetual virginity of our mother blessed Virgin Mary. So we'll have discussed the perpetual virginity of our mother blessed Virgin Mary is to so, so, so talk about a chaste spouse, St. Joseph. Then among other teachings on St. Joseph, he recognized Joseph as the father of the Son of God. Then let us learn from St. John Chrysostom what he has to say about St. Joseph. St. John Chrysostom showed great importance of the person of St. Joseph in the fulfillment of the prophecies and also in the economy of our salvation. He was the first to recognize Joseph as a minister of salvation, what he did in our economy of our salvation, how he cooperated obediently and played his role diligently to bring about our salvation, that nothing happens to Jesus but fulfilled his mission and also the mission of our mother blessed Virgin Mary. According to St. John Chrysostom, no wonder the scriptures called him a just man. And he explained, Joseph being called a just man means that he is virtuous in all things. He is free from covetousness. He is good and considerate. In scriptural sense, this refers to universal virtue, meaning that Joseph is a man that was just and true. So we meet again next week to learn more about what the doctors of the church have said and thought about St. Joseph. Make it a date with St. Joseph and you will never regret it. May St. Joseph continue to pray for us, continue to intercede for us. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. God bless you.